Wonderful. So I just want to invite everyone, well, not invite, you're already here. I want to thank everyone for making it to our study hall this evening. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what we've been doing with this, when we set up the GEMS College of Energy Medicine, one of the concepts that we wanted to kind of run with was the idea of supporting students and practitioners so that we know more about what modalities are out there, what options we have for courses, because I don't know about you, but I look at all of the things that are available and sometimes I go, is this a good choice for me? Um, is this worth my money and my time right now? Is, would this fit well with the other things I work with? Or I'm just curious about what people are offering. And so we decided to open up the study hall, which is usually just a place where people can kind of come in and work together side by side, or they can um, you know, talk about what is coming up in class so they can find someone to balance with. We want to maybe once a month, once every two months, invite somebody who is a course creator or who is an expert in their field to come and just offer some free information for people. So last month we had Denise Cambiati. You can see the recording of her presentation about muscle tuners on our YouTube channel if you wanna check that out or through the college website. But tonight I'm going to introduce Kasia Ratchville. So, she is an integrative healer, energy magician, and mentor for spiritually focused intuitive leaders. Um, her whole mandate is to help people be seen, right? We all know that we have something in us, and sometimes there's a bit of a block to let it shine. And so Kasha really helps people to find what's blocking their, their voice, what's blocking their light, so that they can absolutely be their best. So if you check out her website, you can see that she's got credentials like crazy. She is a speaker, an author, a podcaster. She works with various modalities of kinesiology, including, you know, Touch for Health and Gems and Sips. And uh, that's how we connect as well as through the homeschooling of our kids. Um, and so I'm really happy to be able to hear a little more about these courses that she has created, and I hope you all enjoy spending time with her for the next few minutes. So, please, Kesha. Thank you so much for having me. I feel so excited and a little bit nervous <laughs> speaking to a new community about my, my magic and all the things that I love to nerd out about. So I'm going to share my screen and presumably you can all see a window. Oh, no, technology gremlins. Can you all see that? Is it filling up your screen or can you also see my desktop? It's no. filling mine. Okay, good, because Canva sometimes can be interesting. All right, so there you go, there's me. I do have all the letters behind my name because I spent a good portion of my career not only uh, helping others, but mostly trying to help myself um, heal from things like depression, postpartum depression, and just pain, shame, you know, the gamut of whatever it is we all carry around that, that carry, that um, feels like pain, feels like crap sometimes. And through uh, the last, I've been in business 12 years now, officially, I've collected all kinds of beautiful uh, magic. I just call it all magic now because it just continues to blow my mind. And I really love to work with people who are purpose-driven, who have a thing, love their thing, and bring their best to it. But sometimes their thing gets really intense. So I tend to work with a lot of either entrepreneurs um, or business owners or people who are uh, like mortgage brokers or realtors who have a really high intensity career that they love and they just need that energetic support um, to clear their energy, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. My podcast is called Sacred Fame because I'm playing around with this idea that we don't have to be a celebrity to be fully seen, known, and paid for who we are. We can literally just be ourselves and be the best whatever it is we are in our field, in our city, in our country, in our community, even just, you know, within our group of, of friends or our family. So this idea of sacred fame is uh, creating impact in the world by being yourself and doing what you love, um, not just to be famous. 
All right, so here's what I know for sure, okay? Change is possible when you believe that you can change, even if you don't have very much figured out. If you believe that something can be different, it will be, and the next steps will show up. What really creates change is actually doing the work. And what doing the work means is you implement what you know. You don't just gather a whole bunch of really cool information and you put it on your shelf and you're like, okay, I know that, where's my change? <laughs> of course, I learned that the hard way, being a perpetual student of you know, books, courses, all the things. It wasn't until I started to actually do the things I knew and implement them in my own life, that things started to progress for me. And the last thing that I know without a doubt is that you are worthy, you are whole, you are enough and divine, and not just you, me, all of us, everyone on earth. And we are that just because we exist, not because we have to earn it or because we have to work hard for it. We simply are that. And that's the one thing that the Akashic Records have pounded into me since I started working with them. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but I like underneath every session I, I do, every reading that I do or anything I put out there online, that's the, the thing I want everyone to know. Every man, woman, boy, girl, you know, dog, cat, everyone on earth, I want them to know that they are whole, worthy enough and divine. And if anything stands in the way of that, that is what I see part of my job to clear that out of our bodies, our minds, our emotions, so that we can reconnect to that knowing. And so when I work with people, I, I work with people in a couple of different ways. There's four main pillars that I work with in my uh, practice. That's the mind, body, emotions, and the soul connection. And I started out in my client practice through... Um, mostly doing uh, mental, emotional type uh, support, neuro-linguistic programming, life coaching. And then as I continued on my own path, I discovered energy work and these beautiful other spiritual practices. And so um, the Akashic Records was one of those things that just kept popping up for me and popping up for me. And um, eventually I just decided I'm going to learn how to read them. I'm going to learn how to connect with that energy field because... Um, I, I learned that when the universe puts these breadcrumbs in front of me, uh, it's best to say yes. Otherwise, the, the frying pan will come along, hit you on the head, and you'll be like, oh, I knew it. So I work with the Akashic Records in a couple different ways, and I'll talk about what the records are in a moment. But basically, I either do uh, Akashic Records work with people or for them, or I teach people how to, how to read them um, either read them for yourself or read them for others. So I do what I call um, magic sessions, just energy magic sessions, where I basically combine every tool that I have, depending on what client is in front of me and what they need. Often that will look like a SIP session, um, Akashic Records, intuitive work in that um, past life healing, you know, sometimes NLP still to this day, uh, all, anything that I know how to do, if the person requires it, and if I can help them, then that's what I pull out. Or I do, um, you know, straight up Akashic Records readings, where I connect to that field, person comes, asks questions, and we have a conversation with, with um, that soul connection. The other way I work is through um, teaching courses. So I've developed a couple different courses and introduction course that's three weeks long where I teach you how to read your own records and chart your own life purposes because we all have more than one. I have a six-month certification in the process that I use to access the Akashic Records where I take students through a six-month immersion and they learn not only how to read for themselves but also how to work with the records in a healing uh, modal as a healing modality and how to read them for others. And then I have uh, really my first love, which is the emotional mastery uh, course uh, that I call Embodied Confidence. And I'll share a little bit about that with you in a moment. So that's just a little bit about how I work. And the process that I take, and, and this process has really been evolving, you know, since I started, uh, not just my, my client practice, but really my own personal work, where if you know yourself, you know, if you, if you get to know yourself, and it doesn't matter if you use um, any type of personality profiling like Enneagram or, um, 
or MBTI or like Myers, I guess MBTI is Myers-Briggs or DISC, like it doesn't really matter, right? Like wh whatever personality profiling system you, you look at, um, you can even look at astrology or human design. I happen to love numerology. Um, you can look at who you are fundamentally at like at the core, right? Your, your base personality, no matter who you've learned to be throughout life, you can always come back to that core self. And so knowing yourself and your patterns is really important. And that's one of the things I help my clients is to remember who they are. And then of course, leveraging your, your own connection to your soul wisdom, right? To your inner uh, higher self. So you can be confident. So you can really trust yourself. A lot of that involves uh, undoing a lot of programming, undoing a lot of um, the old conditioning that we picked up as children or as young, young people, you know, or even trauma that comes up in life. So clearing your limiting beliefs, clearing all of that stuff out of your body, it takes time, but it's definitely part of the process. And then of course, creating structures that support so that as you embody more of yourself, as you trust yourself, you remember who you are, you can then create whatever success on your own terms that you want. And this is where I rely heavily on um, the Akashic Records and the numerology work that I do. So the Akashic Records are a way for us to connect with sort of the greater wisdom that exists in the world. And through my work with um, the, the coaching that I've done and then bringing in the records, this is kind of a simplified, a very, very simplified model of how change happens, right? So there's circumstances, whatever circumstances, life, relationships, you name it, right? In order for change to take place, we first have to become aware that there's a circumstance that we might not like, right? We have to become aware. Otherwise, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And so we, we become aware, I don't like that, or I don't want that, or I want something else. And then awareness, of course, is the starting point, but it's not enough. We have to then have a desire to do something about it, right? And then that desire then leads to committing to doing something or being someone else. And then, of course, that commitment over time creates the change. And then that kind of goes in a circle, right? Oh, you know, if, if you look at anyone who's ever created change in their life, this is pretty much the cycle that they, that they take. Now... You may be also familiar with this model, which is this whole idea of thoughts uh, generate feelings that then uh, lead to actions, that then lead to results. And this circle kind of goes around over and over. And again, circumstances can drive the thoughts, which then drive the feelings, actions, blah, 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 over and over. It's like the proverbial hamster wheel. And if your thoughts are working for you, if your emotions are working for you, wonderful then, you know, then you're great. If they're not, again, this is where we can sort of catch some of those um, patterns, those old belief systems, all of that stuff. Now, I'm going to throw a wrench here and say that the mindset cycle kind of looks more like this, where, where we don't actually know where the chicken or the egg, which one came first, right? Did thoughts come first? Did feelings come first? Maybe actions come first, or maybe you notice results and you're like, wait a minute, I don't like that, so I'm going to change something. Right? So the two models kind of work together, and this is where it doesn't really matter where you start. It doesn't matter. You don't have to catch all the thoughts. You don't have to necessarily know exactly what you want to do next or what you shouldn't be doing, right? You can literally just put yourself anywhere in this uh, in this mishmash and um, if you especially bring in that soul wisdom you it can illuminate the truth of okay so why do I think this way or why do I keep having this pattern of feeling like for me on my journey the pattern of feeling was anxiety depression anxiety depression like that was a lot of my 20s and early 30s that was my cycle I didn't know why I didn't like it so I kept trying different things and um, what I love about the Akashic Records, and this is why I'm so obsessed with bringing it into our work, because it's, a, or, or my work at least, it's a, 
well, you can you can say the Akashic Records are like a library. And it's the library of all the information in the universe. And then that library of information informs all the other, you know, it's like a morphic field, right? Morphic field isn't a field of information. And so it informs other morphic fields. It that's why we have so many different ways of organizing information, like MBTI, like DISC, like numerology, like human design, like science, philosophy, right? Biology, all of those fields of information are contained within this cosmic library. And we can ask about anything. The way I've learned to work with the records is more of a personal perspective where you go in and you ask about, okay, where am I stuck? Like, why do I feel like this mindset cycle isn't working for me? Why do my thoughts take me on a freight train ride all the time? Why does my mind derail me all the time? Why can't I trust myself? What actions do I repeatedly take that don't work? What could I change? So I take the approach with the Akashic Records of asking questions that allow us to illuminate the truth of where we keep getting stuck, right? That, that's one perspective. If you've been on a personal journey for a while and you've done a lot of personal uh, development work or healing work, chances are you don't necessarily want to know, okay, so where do I keep getting stuck? You might take the perspective of, okay, what's my next opportunity? Where can I grow next? Um, what is in unfolding in front of me that I can dive into, right? So whether you take the healing perspective or the, the growth expansion perspective, what I love about the Akashic Records is it allows you, the information allows you to just know yourself more deeply. So they offer wisdom, guidance, history of the soul, potential of the soul. Um, people come sometimes wondering, like, have I had past lives? Was I, was I the queen of Egypt? You know, that type of stuff. Definitely we can tap into that if it's important. Um, but again, the way I tend to work with, with that field of information is, is it relevant? Yes, it would be fun to know, were you the queen of Egypt? I mean, who wouldn't want to know that, right? But is it relevant? Would, would knowing that actually help you move your life forward in some way? You know, if you want to expand your career or if you want to heal from something, um, overcome grief or trauma, would that information actually help you? Some of the students I've taught um, have, you know, taken different paths with the records where they do explore past life stuff or or they use the records to channel like you know books and things that they're working on so there are many different ways of, of working with the records um this is the path that i take where i really use it to illuminate you know who is the person where are they stuck or or where are they wanting to release resistance so that we can then do the sessions clear that out and and move them along and of course if you have any questions at any point in time please either pop them in the chat or I will be finished in a few minutes and then you can ask live. So the records really pop in into my work all the time, whether obviously it works on a permission system, but I've kind of got this standing um, intention that whatever client is in front of me and I ask permission in the session to work on them, the records kind of plug in and, and, I have all kinds of really cool things happen in my sessions where I've had, you know, loved ones show up or, or people who have passed away where that bring a message that is really healing for the client. Um, sometimes even uh, when I'm doing, especially like SIPs work and I'm, you know, muscle testing my way sort of through the scan sheets, through the body, I'll feel like, okay, there's resistance here. We're, we're holding resistance in this space, in the body or at this point or in this uh, piece of the aura or the, this auric layer, you know, what do we need to know about that? And that's when the more information pours through. And I, I believe that that, again, comes from the person's records. So that's how I use that tool. But no one tool, it, it's like if you tried to use a hammer for everything in your life, right? No one tool fits all contexts. And 
So even though I'm obsessed with the records, I'm also obsessed with SIPs. I don't always use them both in conjunction, but, but often, you know, this is kind of how I've divided up my work, that if a client comes and they need or they want to work on their soul connection and to support their intuition, then we dive into Akashic Records work and we look at soul agreements, um, sometimes known as soul contracts. There's a reason why I don't call them contracts. So we look at, you know, who are you? Why are you here on earth? What are you here to do and be? And that often will connect them to, uh, reconnect them back to the voice of that higher self, that soul. If they're coming to me to clear mental, emotional, physical stress, then obviously my go-to is the energy kinesiology and, I, and SIPs is usually my wheelhouse, although I've been really loving the gems, um, dimensional stuff. That's like my next favorite thing. And I call that energy magic sessions. And then if someone wants to strengthen their own uh, emotional relationship, like their relationship to themselves and to their emotions, then the Embodied Confidence Emotional Mastery Workshop is really the, the thing I want to talk about. And that's what I'll be teaching on July 23rd through the college, which I'm so excited. And it comes back to that, that slide I had earlier about it doesn't matter where you jump in. Right? Because sometimes you're, you're going along, you're doing your thing, and you notice every time this happens, I get this rise of this crazy feeling in my body. What is that? Or every time I, you know, I'm doing this thing, I get these thoughts that just swirl around and I, I don't know where they come from. And so in that workshop, what I teach is how to identify where you are in this cycle so that you can like put a put a stick in the gear so to speak interrupt the pattern because let's face it our mind is brilliant and it's built to take the path of least resistance once we learn how to be a certain way it's just autopilot and that just works for everything right when you were learning how to ride your bicycle or tie your shoes it was hard in the beginning but now you can just do it when you were learning how to think and how to feel as a tiny kid, maybe it didn't feel hard because you weren't necessarily conscious of it, but you learned it by repetition, whether it was in response or reaction to whatever was going on, right? Chances are a lot of the thoughts and feelings that you carry around with you from your early days aren't there by choice necessarily. Um, and we're not going to get into like, everyone did the best they could with what they knew based on like generational blah, 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 right? We, we know this. So um, it doesn't matter to me where a thought came from, where that feeling comes from, who put it there. What matters to me is that you know what to do with it when it comes up. And there's, there's like more than one way to do this. The way I teach when I learned how to do that, it absolutely changed my life. And it allowed me to um, just be more in control of myself. So some of the results that, you know, I've seen my clients experience, not just as a result of this workshop, but uh, as a result of like the work we do together in, in sessions and in the workshops I teach, is really having more confidence in, in themselves, in trusting their minds, being able to use their voice powerfully and say the thing they're here to say, do the thing they're here to do, be the best, whatever they want to be in their community, whether it's, you know, in their town, internationally, globally, the scale at that point doesn't matter. It's whatever helps them feel like they are being uh, of service and of impact in the world. Um, so that's, those are some of the results. And so this is the workshop that I'm going to be presenting on July 23rd. It's called Embodied Confidence, How to Feel Your Emotions, Manage Your Thoughts, and Connect with Your Body so that you're clear, confident, and trust your choices, decisions, and actions. And that's the link. It's on the GEMS Kinesiology College. It's happening July 23rd at 9 a.m. Pacific. And there you go. I'll stop talking. Stop sharing. And let's chat. What do you want to know? Is the, is the workshop using the Akashic Records? I'm sorry if I didn't. <laughs> oh, sorry, that probably wasn't clear. No, so that, that, 
that workshop is specifically on the emotional uh, mastery work. Oh, okay. I have a uh, the introduction workshop for the Akashic Records coming up on August 5th, which is the three week, like you learn how to read for yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Cheryl, I believe it is US through the college website, right? Oh. It is written in US on the website, yes. But it could be it whatever could be you want to say in if that's what you intended when you said the number. Okay, so because I live in Canada, if you live in Canada, I charge you in Canadian. If you live outside of Canada, I typically charge US. So, um, but, you know, it can be flexible there too. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what other questions do you have? I think my question, I mean, first of all, just thank you for doing this with us this evening. Um, but also, what what tools are you using in the embodied confidence class? Like, are you, is that just somatic noticing? Is that um, muscle testing? Is that pendulum work? Like, what are you doing to help people kind of tap into that? It's a great question. So, yes, I share a few different ways of um, identifying what emotion you're feeling and it is somatic it, it, it's a I, I don't want to call it somatic experiencing because obviously that's a, a trauma release um, protocol but it is to do with the body and I it, the system that I teach is called I, I just called it ABC and each letter stands for something so that when you're in a situation where you are emotionally triggered you have a process that you can go through in that moment so that um, the emotion doesn't sort of take you off on a, on a freight train ride. It, um, you can come back to yourself and know how to choose your response instead of just reacting and blowing up. Sometimes what I find happens is, and if you've been doing emotional work for a while or personal growth work for a while, you may not come up against this you know, often. Um, but sometimes I still do where something happens and my emotional reaction is so over the top compared to the, like, to what happened. It, it's just way out of proportion. And that's when you know you've hit on something. And so this technique also works for, for that. Is that something you use, like someone would use for their own self rather than with clients? And... Do people need to know muscle testing to take the workshop? No, this I designed this workshop or I put it together before I actually ever took um, any kinesiology classes. The kinesiology kind of filled in other holes in my work. Um, you don't need to know how to muscle test. This is something that once you learn it, I and I mean everyone here probably has a background in the physiology of emotions. Right. It's I, I'm assuming that, you know, like you have an amygdala and you have a like the limbic brain and the cerebellum and your neocortex and how they all work together and stuff. So um, I talk about that in a way that helps. Uh, like, I believe that if you understand a little bit about how your body works, how your physiology works together, it's a little bit easier to then apply a process to it because you know what that process is doing. So I don't teach muscle testing, but I teach a little bit about the roadways of what thoughts and emotions do within our body, within us, um, so that you can then sort of identify, okay, I'm here on this roadway, on this map, and if I can orient myself where I am, then I know where I'm going next, as opposed to just freaking out and melting down. So um, this is a process you can use for yourself, or once you know it, um, you could use it with clients easily. And there, there are ways that you can build in some of the kinesiology tools, like using ESR points or um, even the um, like the zip ups and switch ons are really helpful to uh, to move help move that emotion somatically. Does that answer your question, Liz? So it's not a kinesiology rooted, like the roots of this workshop are not kinesiology. It's just, I've adapted it into the work I do. Yeah. Thank 
Can I ask um, Acacia record questions at this point? Yeah, absolutely, for sure, for sure. Cool. So, <laughs> well, I'm curious about the applications because I know what those words mean to me when I see things about the Acacia records, but I also know that other people seem to have a really different idea than I do of what that means, right? And what kind of information can be accessed and you know what uh, what that means for the future or like are things predestined and faded inside it or is there a certain degree of control? Um, so I'm kind of curious, you mentioned it as like the universal library, but I would love to hear your thoughts about what that actually is and be what the scope is of what people can draw from with it. For sure. No, that's a, that's a, like a vast question. And I cover that ad nauseum <laughs> in the courses I teach because the Akashic Records, yes, it's like a field of information. And if you're ever curious about reading some really heavy physics around it, read Irvin Laszlo, The Akashic Field. He's got a couple different books. It's like thick and dense. And I muddled my way through it to try and understand the science. It's it's basically like everything in the universe has a torsion field that vibrates and we could and how I understand it is the Akashic records basically record these vibrations and we can learn how to interpret them. That being said, the interpreter is the lens through which that gets, you know, um, what's the word translated back. So given that as as Kasha, I am pragmatic deeply practical. I love to create structures around things and take really esoteric spiritual information and bring it down to earth so that we can walk this earth, not be in the clouds and be balloon people like floating around, not knowing what to do with ourselves. So there are ways of interpreting the Akashic records where you could tap into all kinds of things. I believe you can tap, you can go in there and like literally ask about anything. Um, the way I've always worked with it is I, I wanted it to be like having your soul on speed dial and, and your soul being able to give you information that is useful to you. So depending on what someone it wants to use it for, you know, do you want to do you want to use it to heal a big pain or a big shame or something in your life or an illness or or something like that then you would ask you would go in there and you would ask questions around that and the question really drives the answer right the quality of the question you ask dictates the quality of the answer you receive if you go in there poking around and, and I've been working with the record since 2014, so I've like tried everything. I've, I've gone in there and I've poked and I've ha tried hacking and <laughs> I've tried to like push the boundaries. If you're not meant to know, first of all, you, you don't, you won't. And, and I think that's because humans often have this, like if, if spirit would just tell me what to do, like if someone would just tell me what to do, if I knew my purpose, I would, I would be so much better off. The problem with that is we give away our power thinking that way, right? We don't need to be told what to do. We have free will for a reason. So spirit will never just inundate you with a bunch of information. The Akashic Records won't just like dump truck a load on you, hoping you understand something so that you can love yourself more, be whole, be enough, all of that, right? So the records, and this is where like, <laughs> this is where the line is very thin between is it science? Is it spirit? I don't know. I can't tell you because I, I walk both lines, right? So I refer to it as, as spirit. I refer to it as, as you know, the, the molecules that live in there. Um, none of the Akashic records, the, the records don't have to hope and wish that you understand something because they know you are powerful enough to like remember yourself, right? And so sometimes you'll go in there and you'll ask, about healing, or you'll ask about opportunities, or you'll ask for a client, um, and you'll get this tiny little piece of information that will just give them the next step or give you the first next step, and, and you won't get any more. So even within a session, um, you will only get the next piece of information required to get that person to the next step, and then they get to then make choices 
do, do they take that step? Do they not take that step? You know, we, it always comes back to what you choose. So I don't know if I'm answering your question at all, but in terms of application, I use it very practically, right? What does the person in front of me need to know or want to know so that they can then have the best day ever, have the best month in their business, the best career, the best health, the best whatever. The records can give me anything, if, but it's, it's always up to the person or me, if I'm at the one asking, to then take the steps to um, put that into action. Some of the students that I've taught in, in my course, um, they don't even use it with other people. They only use it for themselves. Or they, like I have one student who doesn't use it professionally in the sense that I do, but she, she connects in every time she wants to channel information like for her courses or, or there's a book she's writing. And so she just connects and she says she has a wider uh, perspective of the information that she's bringing forward, right? I know like learning a little bit about the Akashic Records in SIPS 8, I would have loved to have more in there, but it's such a vast, mysterious thing that, you know, it, it's the, the lens is only ever that of the interpreter. So I went in a whole circle. Did that like add or, <laughs> or did that muddy the waters? That was gorgeous because I'm so used to it being flipped. You're always the one in my classes that asks the question that causes me to then be like, okay, so here's the 12 different answers we could possibly have to that. Uh, so it was quite gorgeous actually to watch you go through that. <laughs> and, and that was perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions? The, the way I present the records is I teach like by the book, the way I learned and the way that I, my knowledge has evolved, um, the way I was taught by the teacher I studied with changed when I was teaching it. And, and for various reasons, because there's, um, again, the spirituality just kind of leaks in. Like, I believe the more people ask, who are my, who am I? Why am I here? You know, what am I here to do? Who am I here to be? the more that answer can come in, in various forms. And so we evolve and our tools evolve. They have to evolve. The records were hidden for many, many, you know, millennia. I think the records have been in existence since the beginning of time, but A, it wasn't safe for people to have their own power, right? B, it, it, they were hidden by like the, the sages or whoever kept them under lock and key. And, and now that people are becoming more conscious um, and are asking, to connect with their own power. Now there's all these different ways of connecting to that. And I believe the records are here for that purpose. Um, so, you know, the, the way I teach it, it's like, here's a system. And then now that you know it, go break all the rules and poke around and see what happens. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm happy to, go ahead, Teresa. I'm happy to offer the Akashic Records course through the college too. I just um, have to, we just have to pick some dates and, and do it. Uh, mine is less the question and just more of a comment because I've had the pleasure of working with you immensely over the last couple of years. And uh, it's helped me greatly build just my own confidence. Um, but I'm also part of, um, Kesha does a like a weekly Akashic or monthly Akashic Records group as well, where you can ask questions. And, um, and she's read my records in sessions as well. And you know, it's really interesting the information that you receive um, based on what you ask. And I've received information, you know, from everything to like what is, you know, some of my gifts that I have, which, you know, just allow you to kind of connect with yourself and build confidence and go, oh, like I'm good at that for a reason. And then how could I use that? Right. And then, you know, so kind of like do some of that stuff. I've literally also gotten stuff from like, how can I support myself this week? And it like, is like, go ride your bike, <laughs> right? Or like, clean your bookshelf. Like that was literally an answer one, <laughs> one week. It was like this 
bookshelf that was causing me stress in my house. Um, and so it's really interesting. There's so much information in there and it's, it's random. Like you don't know what you're going to get, but it always makes sense. So mm -hmm. it's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's true. And I know for me, often I would expect these epic, you know, thunderous answers to come that would shift everything. And, and no, it's like small steps, small little drops, titrate, titrate the system. Don't, don't overwhelm it. Go clean a bookshelf, go ride your bike, go sleep, <laughs> go nap. <laughs> that makes the biggest impact. And so I've learned to trust those, um, just those nudges, those little bits of information, even like, you know, all of us here work with kinesiology to some degree, sometimes it's not the biggest things that create the small, like, or the, yeah, the biggest things that create the, the biggest changes. Sometimes it's just the, the consistency of doing the work, doing the small things that, um, like doing your zip ups every morning or when you feel staticky, right? That's such a small thing, but it creates such a huge impact. So no matter what tool you end up using, um, I believe it's just the, the willingness to use it. Like I said in the beginning, you can change if you believe you can, even if you don't have it all figured out. The Akashic Records help you figure out just the next drop that you need, not the whole ocean, because that would freak you out. <laughs> what else do you want to know? Or we can just wrap up. I don't have to sit here lecturing. <laughs> How much of it is, is like clair, uh, clairvoyance? You know, like if someone, I, I don't know, I don't have clear clairvoyant power, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. In a while, yeah, I do, but it's not, you know, does this open that up for you? Is it something? Great question. It can. You don't actually have to have clairvoyance, clairsentient, like you don't have to have any of your clairs. Um, what I find, because it works on the uh, principle of, of vibration and um, like your biocomputer, I think I've heard it called that, whatever training, knowledge, experiences, information that you have in your body is fair game. The records will drop information into you and you get to interpret it however works for you. So for me, I see a lot of things in my mind's eye. I feel a lot in my body. Um, sometimes I will get like uh, a word. I don't hear it. I, it will just be like sometimes when you get a song stuck in your head and you don't know where it comes from, but it's on repeat, that's kind of what that feels like where I know, and, and if it's a word that I wouldn't normally use often, um, then I know it's important and, and I know it came from. One, uh, one of the things that all students will be like, well, how do I know if I'm making it up? Even if you're like reading tarot cards or if you're, I don't know, doing intuitive work of any kind, how do I know if I'm, if I'm making it up? Well, do you have to think about it or do you just know it? Right? If I asked you right now to tell me a story about a hippopotamus and a rainbow, you'd have to really think about, oh my God, I, I don't know, what, what kind of story can I come up with? When you're working with that field, when you, when you know how to attune your energy, and I think this is why it, it's so significant when I'm doing sessions, especially like the, the SIPS stuff, because you just get into a zone, right? You connect with the muscle, you have your points, whether in a scan sheet or in your head, or, or on like on the wall in front of you and you're just like doing your thing and information just drops in or you feel it in your body. And so I, like, I, I wish it was as easy as me saying, okay, if you do this and you'll see it like it's on a TV screen or you'll get a, like a beautiful printout and you'll know what to say. The, the, again, it comes with practice. I had one student who never saw a thing, never heard a thing, but felt everything in her body. And until she, she decided, okay, this is how they talk to me. She really struggled. And then once she decided, okay, well, this is how they talk to me. So when I have a person in front of me and I feel this stuff in my knees, or I feel something in my shoulder and my back, what does that mean? How does that, you know, how do I want to interpret that? So 
I suspect that all of us here have different ways of connecting with the body and with the energy field. However, that already happens to you would probably be how the records give you information. So, and you might develop other ways as well. Yeah. I, I wish I could hear like the voice of it. I think that'd be so cool and probably a little scary, but I think that'd be so cool. <laughs> So when I when I teach the classes, I, I give all kinds of different ways of of practicing, and and practice is the key, really. Yeah. Great questions. All right. No other questions. Okay. If there's no other questions, then I will probably just, again, thank you so much for joining us with this and for offering a little bit of information and some ideas about how we might play with these concepts. Um, there is information about the Embodied Confidence Emotional Mastery class on the GEMS uh, Kinesiology College website right now. We have not yet set dates for the Acacia Records classes, but it's coming. So. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions that you think of, you know, after like watching the recording or you think of after this, just feel free to send us a message and we'll make sure that they get to Kasha and we'll connect everybody. And uh, that way, you know, you can get all of the answers you're looking for. Anything that you want to say before I turn off the recording? Uh, if you want to connect with me, I'm I'm just under my own name on all the social media places, and and feel free to reach out to me directly as well if you have questions now or whenever. So thank you. <laughs>